Hi friends, it's Shanna, Shop Glorious Day on this slightly chilly Tuesday at uh, Round Top Antiques Week. The temps are actually close to 50 right now, so I'm noticing <laughs> my nose is a little pink. Um, and I'm at Zap Hall right now. It's opening day at Marburger. Don't think I'm gonna make it there today, um, though I did hear it's uh, bustling and lots of traffic getting in, so uh, we will get by one way or another. I did want to take a minute, though, to stroll you around Zap Hall a bit. Uh, there is the Warrington Wine Walk tonight, um, which you'll want to make note of, and um, come down for the venues open, and folks are still out. You just gotta dress uh, cozy. So um, I'm gonna turn the camera around. Um, I'm at the um, Tom Bombadil Meadery, which we're gonna walk back to, but I thought I'd just bring you up here first to get a sense of perspective, how to find him, the village kind of feel here that's really lovely, and um, then we'll walk back. So that's sort of coming in from 237. Actually, Punky's Place would be kind of in the distance on 237. And this is um, uh, Beth's dirty bohemian tent. She's actually uh, got a spot at Marburger as well, so she's there right now. Um, just get, actually, let's take a look. So this is Zap Hall, historic Zap Hall itself, which we will also get into. And, um, Oh, several here that will hit, so I won't, I won't uh, hold up too long. But there's the Vincent Peach uh, building, Zab Hall here, Sangria, Mimosas, and all. Folks are definitely still out. Silver to wear and more, and this is where you can get some uh, the Royers Cafe here at Zab Hall. Um, so you put your orders here, then go around the other side, and there's tables outside um, dime store cowgirl I love this whole setup really fun and then there's a back door here at Zap Hall too but let's go around oh and that's a to the moon bus um, which we visited last year last fall we'll get back in for a peek too so just to spin around kind of what's in back here so you know to come in behind and now we'll take a minute though to talk with Jim at Tom Bombadil Meadery. Good to meet you. So glad we had some time to chat. I thought I'd just give you the opportunity okay. to tell us a little bit about your business, the name, well, your joys and what I do with everybody in yeah. this whole thing. The reason why we use Tom Bombadil is because he's a character from Lord of the Rings who kept giant bees and he was not, never in the movies because he was publicly uh, donated his book of points. <laughs> it's okay. Sorry. This is like real life. We just catch it the way it really happens. <laughs> so he's gonna catch a phone call, and I'll just show you some of the products here for a minute since he's uh, on the phone. But you can see the pure raw local honey, <clears throat> pollen there, honey sweet jam. Oh, no kidding. Oh, wow. Yeah, wow. So so we'll carry on. Back okay. to your story. So anyway, uh, Tom Bombadil is, is a public uh, donation of a book of points. And they did that in 1936. So yeah. they can't copyright them. We use the name. Yeah. So gotcha. that's where, and they have Tom Bombadil festivals up in New England because they can do that. No kidding. Yeah. So, so for our Brimfield friends, you'll want to look up, look that up. Brimfield, right. The Brimfield show. He's in the second book of the Lord of the Rings series. Okay. That's where you'll find him. He's okay. The one who gave the hobbits their weapons. Yeah. And saved them twice. Fascinating. Like I love that. So. Anyway, where I got yeah. started making this was I've been a beekeeper for 45 years. Okay. And I couldn't find any means that I liked because it was too sweet. So I started making a dry version for myself. Okay. And then for my customers, I ended up finding I had to add a semi sweet and a sweet version. Okay, so let's go back a little bit. So I wasn't familiar with the term mead. Okay, mead is uh, the oldest alcoholic beverage known to man. The Chinese have been making it for over 7,000 years. Us Celts have been doing it about 2,000 years. And uh, the you know, Norse and all that. But it's a product made, the ingredients are simply water, honey, and yeast. 
Wow. That's why it's the oldest alcoholic beverage. Because if you leave honey sitting out in the open, yep. it's hygroscopic, will absorb enough water, where the yeast that's always in there will start fermenting it. Now, you might get vinegar instead of wine. Okay. <laughs> that's why the first step is to kill off the wild yeast and put the yeast you want in it. Right. Look at that. Uh -huh, so what's it, how does it compare in taste to any other kind of... Well, the, you know, funny thing is, my daughter lives in Japan, so okay. I've gotten to try real sake, not the stuff we get. Sure. Because when she got married, his, his uh, father came over and brought $400 worth of real sake, so I didn't try it. Wow. And a lot of people compare this to the taste of sake, yeah. believe it or not. Really? And it's got the same strength, too, so... It ends up being that's about the closest. You wouldn't think you wouldn't expect that when you're talking about something that's coming from honey. Yeah, and as opposed to rice. So it's a bit of a surprise if you're bringing it right. as a beverage to like a dinner party or something. Yeah. Now, the, <laughs> the other one that, that you can get, this one is very similar to, yeah. would be like a very strong dry Chardonnay. Okay. It's stronger than Chardonnay, but it has kind of a similar flavor to that. Yeah. And it has a color very similar to that. Gotcha. And was I noticing the strength is a little more than, let's the say... Strength is, this is based on Merlot strength. Okay. Because I like Merlot. Yeah. So this one is similar to that, but I went ahead and made the semi-sweet and the sweet with the same strength. Okay. And normally a semi-sweet would be somewhere around 10 to 11%. Yeah. And the sweet would normally be about 9%. So my okay. sweet my semi-sweet are stronger than normal. Gotcha. Okay. And then for the honeys here... And the honey, I've been keeping honeybees for 45 years. And you're here from... Georgetown, and you were saying too that you're also at the Green Market, yeah, a very so popular the market. market. There yeah. In the Big Ten, green, so okay. Go to the Big Ten. That's where we are. Go to We're the Big Ten. Yeah, that's and then great. We have Bernie about uh, six, seven times a year. Okay. And then we have a rent fair that we do. We have two buildings that up in Mount Pleasant. Wow. Okay. Awesome. Well, this has been great. And anything in particular they'd want to know about the honey? Well, this is wildflower honey, basically. Yeah. Uh, probably 40% of it is from uh, mosquito, which is, people don't know this, that's the number one honey plant in Texas. Really? For me, that's going from the state acres in a and Wow. So people fascinating. Honey plant is Texas, right. <laughs> but it makes more honey in Texas than any other plant. That's amazing. Wow. Well, Jim, it's been a lovely time visiting with you. And so folks can know to find you in the back of Zap Hall, right literally in the back corner of the Zap Hall building, kind of outside in the tent the here. South. Uh, southwest corner. Southwest corner. Yeah. There you go. So come and find him, the honey, the special new beverage that you'll have to try that I'm guessing you maybe haven't uh, yet. And so good. Well, it's been awesome. Thank you so much, Jim. Shanna, shop glorious day here at Round Top Antiques Week, Zap Hall. Bye for now. Thank you.